Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I'm introducing a new part I made in Blender and brought into the game and it is basically a kerbled claw. Uh, the claw part, the uh, advanced grappling unit, uh, you can claw onto various things like asteroids and push it around, uh, but this is a small compact version, barely able to fit a kerbal inside that serves the same function, has built-in RCS ports and tanks and everything, and can push uh, objects around. Now, of course, in 1.12, kerbals themselves, uh, especially engineers, can move objects around, but this is a little bit more robust and can push them for long distances, that kind of thing. And so I wanted a part like this. It's basically the logical equivalent of the Canada tug that I had before, which was uncrewed and somewhat more capable than this is. It had extendable RCS and I used it to build the International Space Station back in the day. But both are basically built around the propellant only docking port, though unfortunately a fringe for the docking port clips into this. I didn't really want that, but oh well, we've got that. And so yeah, but it's meant to fit this docking port just barely and other things just barely. And it arms itself. We've got arm and this arm here. A very simple animation. I was pretty lazy about it. But let's uh, check out the very basic thing of getting a Kerbal in and out of it and how the IVA looks because this has a Kerbal inside. So we will have Jeb uh, and it's called Pod for Pod Bays. Uh, it's basically my equivalent of the 2001 A Space Odyssey pod and so that's what I've got. The RCS thrust replacement I might change. It's a little bit problematic. I've already tested it out, but I've had problems, and in fact, I'm here to get answers if somebody has them. So you can see on its own, it's about 507 kilograms. That's with the fuel, which is 190 kilograms of hydrazine and with the Kerbal. You can see the Kerbal inside. Oh, uh, Jeb's sort of clipping into the seat a bit. I tried to move him, but anyway, uh, the view from inside is like this. We've got two raster prop monitor monitors, and uh, to use this, you will need uh, a set props and raster prop monitor otherwise these won't appear uh, not that that's a problem I fit the Kerbal seat there you can see this is the stock uh, Kerbal seat uh, though I think I've got Jeb shifted a little bit uh, too far back and maybe a little bit too far down but if I shift him up he won't be able to see out the front very well there's enough headroom I think but Anyway, I think I'll leave it like this for now. Tweaking it is really hard as far as doing the IVA views after all. I'll do it eventually if I have time. <laughs> but for now, this is serviceable. He can look out the window and he can use his instruments, so that's important. So, yeah. Now let's have Jeb EVA. And Jeb can EVA. You can see it's basically the same width as the helmeted Jeb. Of course, inside it's a non-helmeted Jeb. It's a little bit controversial because, uh, in theory, for two Mars and beyond, I've sized everything for humans. But I guess if you scrunch up a bit and tuck your knees in, uh, a human could get in there too. The Kerbals uh, don't really have much by way of legs. Uh, we do. We will have to tuck ourselves in. But I think a human can fit in there too. It's just that uh, you'll have to scrunch up a bit. It won't be comfortable. But anyway, uh, so Jeb can get in and out properly. There's no obstruction like that. And uh, arm. So what happens, the problem that I've had with it is that regardless of whether I say arm or disarm, the claw functionality works. And so it tries to grab everything. But we'll see that uh, when we get into its na native habitat in space and for that I also want a mothership. So this is the Yaruki that I introduced in a prior video in KSP 1.12 and here we have two of the pods in the pod bay, the smiling face pod bay. Um, and we have water tanks in the back that hopefully the pods can grab. I put docking ports on the water tanks though I don't plan on using them. We'll just dump it in the bay if we get to that point. But again, I've been having a few problems and I will mention them and hopefully maybe somebody will know, but there are very specific problems in a very specific situation here. So maybe I'm the only one that will ever have encountered them, which is always wonderful. Okay, 
let's bring it outside and I there's the one case that I actually cheat things into orbit and that's when I'm testing out a part so I will cheat it into orbit and we'll see how it works all right it is in orbit so this is what the arrow key looks like in orbit <laughs> it still looks goofy anyway so one problem that I have had and it's not related to the little pod is that my RCS blocks, which worked in prior versions of KSP, these blocks don't seem to be working as RCS right now. They've got the fuel. I made sure that this was set to the fuel that those ports use, but they don't seem to be running. So I'll have to check up on that because that's disturbing. It's not that no RCS works. In fact, the RCS I configured on these pods seems to work. It's just that these ports don't, so... I don't know. I don't know why they're marked interstellar RCS as well, but this is too, and these work, so I guess that's not a barrier. Of course, I've got KSP interstellar in this particular install, but uh, all right. So I think I accidentally put Jeb in the main cockpit when I meant to have him in the pod, so let me shift him into the pod. Okay, so Jeb is in there, right. And let's kill rotation there. I'll start the RCS here and undock. Okay. Now, uh, down, down, down. Oh, kill rotation. Oh, kill rotation. Up, 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 up. Down, 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 down. Down. Uh, don't, don't grab it. Don't grab it. <laughs> Eek. Yeah, I, I need to work on the RCS orientations. I place them where they would be most convenient, but this clearly needs extras. Okay. Well, it didn't claw anything that time, but I don't think it got in range. Mm, arm. Well, now we want it armed, so maybe it was working, maybe it wasn't. This is the view from the pod in space. There's Earth. And I'm not going to try and control it from here. But one reason I wanted to make this was for like role playing stuff. So instead of having the engineer function, which might not feel legit uh, in certain circumstances, this might work better. It's a cute little pod. Okay, but we need to grab that water tank. Yeah, translating up and down seems to impart a role because we've got... Really, it would be just fine if it used these and not those back there. Maybe I should just delete those back there, but... the There's uh, one axis of rotation that's being managed by those, so... Uh, it's using too much fuel. I should have it on caps lock. Uh, this side panel, I could probably do a better job placing, and maybe I should just get rid of that. So two of these will have to manage some pretty big modules. That's uh, another question. They're not as efficient as the Canada Tugs, because the Canada Tugs had MH and Mon 3, and also more fuel. Okay, we've attached to the tank. All right, but the way we are, um, we probably can't fit into the bay. Anyway, let's uh, undock. Switch. All right, we have a tank. Well, this is obviously not the best balance. With having only one of these particular pods is difficult. Maybe I should have extending RCS ports for it too. Maybe that would be better. It definitely needs a forward set to counterbalance the back set. But the problem is the full forward portion was meant to be a door. Basically, the Kerbal could open the entire front bit to get in. Because after all, there's not that much size to it. So there wasn't any real place to put RCS ports in the front. Especially with the arms in the way. Unless we uh, put it right at the top, maybe. We could uh, put a set on top and a set on the base. 
but it's sort of iffy. Uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna have to fix the RCS on this. It really can't hang on to something like that. On its own, it's a problem. If we had two, it'd be easier, but with some small object like this, it's no good. Um, we'll need some extra RCS ports. These in the back are just causing too much trouble. Alright, well, yeah, improvements will have to be made. I think the only way we're gonna get this back in is if we let go of this. So let me... Uh, release. And I want to do another test. So we've released it. I want to disarm. And I'm wondering... whether it's going to magnetize again even though I'm disarmed because I had trouble with that before. Well, maybe it won't. Or maybe it didn't uh, reset though. Oh, yeah, even though I said disarm, it's still effectively armed. So disarm doesn't work with it. So disarm does the animation, but it doesn't actually disarm the claw. And so that's another problem I've been having. I copied the, the stock part, the advanced grappling unit, as clearly as possible, but I don't actually know what free pivot does for us in this case. Well, I guess it's sort of pre freeze pivot. All right, but yeah, lock pivot. Okay, so we can do that, but for some reason, basically the claw on this is always armed. So that's a problem I've been having. Well, let me see if I can get it back inside. So if you have any idea, it's a weird thing. Mostly people do not put claw parts, I mean claw modules on their parts. So maybe nobody knows really why it would be remain armed even though I've said this arm. But maybe there's something, I don't know. Maybe it has to be on a certain layer or something, I don't know. There are all sorts of peculiarities to Kerbal ways. When it comes to making parts. The other thing is the RCS over there though. Why would RCS ports that used to work in curl space program maybe not work now? I'll make a general. Uh, especially with realism overhaul. Maybe somebody does know that. Oh, uh, okay. Inside. All right. Oh gosh, now I have to switch. Oh, I could just claw the thing though. Uh, no, let's not do that. Set as target. Okay. Oh no, no. Uh, do you control from here. Control from here. Uh. Okay, um, back up, back, oh, that's not back, oh no, oh, uh, all sorts of fun with this thing, we're not rotated right, but that's not gonna be something I fix right now. Uh, uh, magnetism, all right, we got it docked back in, but I've once again made something that's really hard to operate. As I do so frequently. But yeah, these are CS ports. I, I really wish... I'm gonna disable this here. Those are both disabled. I'm gonna close the front door. Okay. Um, make sure... They, they, they say they're enabled. But they sure aren't working. And again, uh, I set the propellant in here based on what they had set. So... Yep. I don't know what's going on with them. But anyway, that is the little pod for pod bays. And I guess I'll hold off on uh, releasing it until I fix some... To fix the RCS thrusters at least. Maybe our extending RCS thrusters would be better. Because the current thruster arrangement just isn't very good. 
But if you have any other thoughts, uh, feel free to tell me and I'll continue working on it. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.